Thank you everyone for joining us and welcome. Um, I'm Cindy Jolliker and I am the, uh, a member of the Board of Directors of NUI and Chair of the Marketing Committee. Uh, we're thrilled that we're able to um, pit, pivot and provide value to our members through uh, webinars and virtual formats and thrilled to have you join us here today as well. Um, I'm pleased to introduce Catherine McLean, who's gonna be running our webinar today on how to become your own recruiter. Catherine is a well-known force in the energy and environment field. She developed a passion for clean energy and tech back in 2011, working at the United Nations, developing relationships with government and on private, pri pri private public partnerships, and subsequently took a job as a consultant at Acre Resources, a global recruitment firm focused on energy and sustainability. Catherine founded recruitment business McLean Ross in 2011 with a core focus on placing sales and marketing professionals within the energy and utility industries. And in 2017, McLean Ross merged with global engineering recruitment business JDR Energy, creating JD Ross Energy. With a growing need for diversity and clean energy, Catherine then launched Dillon Green in 2019, placing diverse commercial professionals within the clean energy market. Thank you for joining us, Catherine. Thank you to our audience members. And let's get started and hear how Catherine can help you learn to be your own recruiter. Thanks so much, Cindy. Next slide. Just to jump in with a bit of um, <laughs> housekeeping here from uh, our side. If you do have a question, um, at the end of, of Catherine's presentation, we are going to move to a Q&A format and uh, just select the raise your hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen if you do have a question and then we will call on you um, and you will be able to unmute yourself and ask your question to Catherine and she will answer it directly. So before I hand it over to Catherine, just wanted to give that one housekeeping item. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, so um, as Cindy was saying, I am a founder and CEO of Dylan Green, a strategic talent acquisition uh, consultancy, placing commercial professionals with the clean energy and technology space. So um, my video has been stopped. <laughs> okay. Um, so types of roles I place uh, when we talk about commercial professional services are anything from legal, accountancy, sales, marketing, um, project finance, those type of positions, not so much the um, roles out in the field, much more kind of the typical office roles as, as, it, as it were. Uh, next slide. So I want to talk a little bit about finding job leads and application tips, job application tips. I saw a lot of people had responded that this was something that they're interested in learning about. Um, what I will say is it's very important to use all types of media. When I say use all types of media, I think that we all get in a bit of a, um, I don't want to say rut, but we have the kind of media that we like and we tend to stick to it. So I like Google as opposed to Bing. I like LinkedIn. I don't use Twitter. Um, it's really important that when you're looking for a job that you get out of like that comfort zone of just the media that you normally use and try and make sure that you look at all different search engines and all different kinds of social media because you'd be really surprised what's out there that um, you may not know about. The other thing is, and I've attached a link to this later on in the presentation, is recruiters use what's called Boolean searching. Um, Boolean searching is typically done when a recruiter is trying to find candidates. So if I wanted to find a business development manager in solar, I would say business development and in quotation marks and solar in quotation marks. I'd go on LinkedIn with that search and I'd search in Boston, and then I would get a bunch of people that I'd contact. This is a really neat trick for people who are looking to find a job because you can do the same thing with clients and with companies' um, jobs. So for example, if you want to find a business development manager role um, in solar in Boston, 
all you have to do is exactly what I just said. But instead of going under people, you go under jobs. Instead of going under people, you can go under companies. So it's a great way to, um, to kind of find opportunities and really hone your job alerts to relevant uh, people and uh, jobs. The other thing is make sure you tailor your application. This just happens to me twice this morning where people are sending me resumes and I'm like, that, thank you for sending me a resume. It's a really great resume. It's just not relevant or as relevant as it could be to the job that we're discussing. Um, I think that there's a tendency to like want to immediately send your resume to a recruiter or to a job. Just take a moment <laughs> to make sure that the resume you're sending is the best version of yourself for that particular company or that particular job or that particular recruiter. I much rather, especially when I say, please take some time to update your resume um, and then send it to me 30 seconds later, I much rather that you took the time to update it to how um, it, you know, how I kind of want it to be. Uh, and, and you know, get back to me in a day or two. It doesn't have to be instant gratification. Um, the other important thing is make sure you follow up. This seems like a, a given, but you, you cannot just send an application in somewhere and not follow up. Uh, you are really gonna put yourself in a situation where you're leaving it up to you know, the gods as it were on whether or not these companies get back to you. Some of these companies might have a phenomenal internal recruitment team. Some of these companies, most won't. So make sure that when you apply somewhere, whether it's to an actual job or just to a company that you're interested in, follow up. I would say you could follow up in a day or two, or you could follow up in a few days. It's completely up to what you feel comfortable with, but make sure you let them know, hey, to an actual email address, to a live person, hey, such and such, I've applied for this role via LinkedIn or via your website. Just wanted to let you know, here's my details again. Any questions, please get in touch. Um, the next tip I would say is tell everybody that you're looking, especially if you're a career changer. You would be really surprised how great our networks are and we don't even realize it. If you let Everybody know, and I know it sounds silly, but I'm talking about your neighbors. I'm talking about like your hairdresser. I know it sounds silly, but you would be shocked who knows people in the space and, who, and, and who's connected to who. I mean, I could give you 10 stories where you're like, I never in a million years would have thought that person could have helped me and introduced me to someone else. You'd be so surprised. So if you're interested in getting into the space and you're not from the clean energy industry, tell everyone that will listen <laughs> that you're looking to get into the space and ask them if they know anyone. Uh, it's so important to networking, uh, to network. Be prepared to pivot. So this is a really key one, especially with everything going on with COVID. Um, if you have your heart set on something, like, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I want to be an EV, I want to be in transportation, electric vehicle transportation. You know, that's a great space um, and it's growing, definitely. But, you know, I wouldn't just limit yourself to that because there's a lot of opportunities across clean energy, not just EV or solar or wind or uh, utilities. It's important that you keep an open mind when you're trying to get into the industry. The goal is really just to get a foot in the door, right? So, you know, if you're passionate about EV, but there's an, a, an opportunity for you to get into solar and you have no clean energy experience, my advice would be get into solar because you'll have a heck of an easier time with a couple of years of solar experience than pivoting into EV than you would uh, without it. So get a foot in the door, regardless of where it is within clean energy, just, just find a way in. Uh, next slide, please. So this is, uh, here's some resume tips. You know, every, <laughs> everybody's gonna have different resume tips. So this is just my personal opinion. Uh, you could probably speak to 10 other recruiters. They would have uh, other opinions. But, um, you know, I think it's really important, especially as women, that we use active language. And what I mean by active language, and you can Google this, Google active language resume, is we have a tendency to be passive when we're talking about our accomplishments and our, um, we get very responsibility driven because we feel like we need to be apologetic sometimes about our accomplishments. 
Um, so make sure that when you're talking about your experience in your resume, you use words like advised, directed, uh, improved, negotiated, motivated. Keep it very achievement based, especially if you're again coming into the industry. Um, I, people are not overly concerned about your responsibilities, what your day to day is. I mean, let's face it, we do a lot of things probably in our job on a day to day basis. It's not overly exciting. So you need to think about if I were to leave this company tomorrow, what mark have I left? They're going to be like, boy, you know, we're really sorry to see you go. Well, really, thank you so much for doing this or that. You know, she'll really be remembered for this or that. So it's really important you keep it um, achievement based using active language. Um, education. So education is an interesting one. You have to be careful with education because education becomes irrelevant quickly. And what I mean by that is that if you've graduated in the past, I'd say five to 10 years, there's no problem to put education at the beginning of your resume. I'd even say that if you've graduated within the past five years, you want to get even into the detail on your education. And what I mean by detail is activities you did, maybe a dissertation, um, a GPA, if it's very high, and, and when I say very high, probably 3.5 and over um, would be worth sharing. Other than that, I don't think it's worth sharing. Um, I, I certainly didn't achieve anything with the three in it. So I, I have never put it on my resume personally. Um, but I think that when, edu when I say education quickly becomes irrelevant, it, 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 you use education when your experience is light and, and you put education further down your resume when your experience gets uh, more, uh, get, gets, you have more experience. So um, again, Education in the beginning of your resume, if it's more relevant, recent. Education at the end of your resume, if your experience is more recent and more relevant. Um, when we talk about professional experience, let's really, really make sure that, again, we're keeping it recent and relevant. And what I mean by that is, there, if you have a lot of experience, you do not need to go into every single job that you had. You really just need to highlight maybe the past 15 years, of what you've been doing, um, maybe 20 at a push. You can easily put at the end of the resume, uh, previous uh, career experience available upon request. You can definitely talk about it. It's just people's attention spans are very, very short, especially when it comes to filtering resumes, both recruiters and um, hiring managers. So you don't want that resume to be any longer than two pages, which is the next bullet after uh, length, please, please, please keep it short. Um, two pages at an absolute max is all it needs to be. Um, and then consistency is so important. So I think as we add to our resume, you really wanna make sure that you're using the same language, the same format, the same font. Again, I think people are in like such a rush to kind of add to it that you wind up with like, you know, maybe you were, you're using present tense in your previous role when you should be using past tense for your previous role and only present tense for your current role. Same thing with, you know, bullet points. I see this all the time. People use all sorts of indenting and bullet points and different format. And the whole thing looks like a hodgepodge. So make sure that it all flows together as one document. Um, and then the other thing I would say is, especially in this day and age, uh, you must, you have to include your LinkedIn profile. Um, people push back on this, you know, oh, I don't use LinkedIn, you know, blah, blah. I, I quite frankly don't care if you use LinkedIn or not. Hiring managers look LinkedIn, fact. I've had people actually not get interviews because they haven't um, had LinkedIn profiles the hiring managers have liked. Um, it is absolutely vital that you have a LinkedIn. It doesn't need to be, Lots of detail, you can keep it super brief, but you have to have a LinkedIn profile. And I really strongly advise that you list it on your resume, especially if you have um, a relatively generic name. So if your name is Sue Smith, there's obviously a lot of Sue Smiths, so it can be quite hard for someone like a recruiter or an employer to find you online. So it just, just make it a little bit easier on them and give them the link so they can look at your profile. 
Uh, the other thing is, I see this all the time, uh, is people don't save it properly. I get people send me resumes with all kinds of different names. Like they save it as my resume or Sue's resume or a lot of times people will send me a document and I'll open it and it will be another person's name when I open the document because they've had a friend edit it and it comes up as their name. This stuff you would think sounds um, pretty straightforward and like, you know, not a mistake a lot of people make. I, it actually happens quite a bit. <laughs> so make sure it's saved in a PDF always and make sure that it's saved with just your name. That's it. Just your name. Sue Smith resume. Next slide, please. LinkedIn tips. Uh, LinkedIn is something I take very seriously. Um, I think that you have to have a photo on LinkedIn. There is a ton of data uh, that backs me up on this. Uh, you need to make sure that your photo is public. So not just that you have a photo that your first connections can see. Um, I cannot begin to tell you how important having a professional photo is. Um, it really, when I find someone, when I'm doing searches for candidates online and they show up in one of my searches and I think they look really good and they don't have a photo, um, it, it makes me pause. It gives me pause. Um, it makes me feel a bit, um, uncertain on the type of, you know, if this is a person I should contact, I know that sounds quite extreme. Uh, this, this, this is how how recruiters feel and hire and employers. Um, you know, I'm sure there are people that would like to disagree with me on that and that's totally fine, but there's something inviting about having your photo on LinkedIn. I think you have a lot of countries that have their photo on the resume. Uh, you know, we don't do that here. It's not considered, you know, something that's uh, in fashion to have your photo on your resume. That's why it's nice to have a professional photo uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, your profile. So your profile is your elevator pitch. And you can also have this on your resume, especially if education is less relevant, um, less recent for you. If you have education at the bottom of your resume, for example, it's nice to have a objective or profile um, pitch. And so what I mean by that is an executive summary that simply is your 30 second elevator pitch that is three to five sentences um, what you're great at, once you're, what you're interested in, and what value you can provide. Um, I do think that it's nice when your resume mirrors your LinkedIn. So if you're going to do it on your resume, make sure it's the same on your LinkedIn. If education is the most recent thing for you, and you maybe don't have, uh, want to put a profile or executive uh, summary on your resume, that's fine. Just make sure that you have it on your LinkedIn. Uh, it's just a nice entry uh, into your profile for the reader. Again, jobs, keep it relevant, keep it current. If, if you're a recent grad and you've had internships, include them. If your internships were quite some time ago, you don't need to include them. You don't need to include every four to six month stint that you had. I had an internship at the UN for seven months, 10 years ago. Why do I include it? I include it because it tells the story of how I wound up getting into clean energy, right? So normally I would say don't include it, but that piece, that UN internship piece shows specifically that moment where I switched gears from working in the finance world um, and logistics to then going into clean energy. So that's why I keep it. There's a point, there's a reason, there's a narrative there. Um, education. Uh, this is another pet peeve of mine. Again, you know, you don't have to do this. This is just something I see um, quite a bit that that um, that I don't think needs to be there. That kind of irks me. Um, you you do not need to put your high school. I see people put their high school and their high school activities on there, and they've you know not been in high school for quite some time, or even if you have been in high school quite uh, you know recently, I, you, you don't need to include high school. Again, my opinion. Um, I think your secondary education is great. Maybe any certificates or training courses that you have that you feel are relevant and, and you know, recent that you want to include, absolutely. Um, I just don't think that you, you need to have your high school listed, in my opinion. Recommendations. So recommendations is so important because it gives that audience, that person reading your profile, um, a view of you, not just 
from what you're saying, but from what others say. So it's really important if you recently graduated, you have a professor, for example, that's given you a review, or if you've done an internship, somebody's given you a recommendation. Um, I have candidate recommendations, client recommendations, colleague rep recommendations. It's really nice to give a 360 view of you. Um, and I think it also, for someone like a recruiter, it kind of just puts our mind at ease. I know when I see a profile and then I see someone with a recommendation and it's like from 2011, I'm like, okay, well, you know, it's nice they have a recommendation, but there's such a difference when I see somebody's had a recommendation from like 2018. I'm just like, oh, that's interesting. Like somebody took the time to, whether it was like a client of theirs or somebody they worked with, somebody just took the time to kind of sing your praises. I, I, that really means um, a lot to someone like myself and I'm sure to a potential employer. It's just about reassuring them that you're a person that they want to engage with. Next slide. Next slide, please. So how to engage a recruiter. Um, first of all, find the right recruiter. Do your homework. Um, there are a lot of recruiters <laughs> that, uh, and we tend to be specialized. Um, so like I said, you know, I get a lot of people contact me who are t really technical engineers, like wind turbine mechanics and, and the like, and that's like, that's awesome. But I, I just don't focus on that. So make sure that you're looking for recruiters um, and doing some searches. And you can even use those Booleans that we were talking about, clean energy, solar, business development, recruiter, Boston, um, all those kinds of um, keywords to kind of find your right recruiter. First impressions matter. So when you contact the recruiter, make sure that you're professional, you're clear, and you're concise. So what I mean by that is don't sort of waffle on, get to the point, say, you know, this is who I am, here's my resume, this is why I wanna to speak to you, this is what I'm looking for. Um, be proactive, if you think that if that person hasn't gotten back to you and you think they are the right recruiter for you, give it a week and contact them again. Uh, we get really busy. We have a lot of people contact us like on LinkedIn. So make sure that you're proactive and you, um, you know, stay on them. And the same thing goes for if you speak to the recruiter and um, they say, look, you know, I think you're a good candidate. You're relevant to my jobs that I get on. I just don't have anything for you right now. Uh, when they say that, make sure that you're looking at their LinkedIn uh, for any roles that they advertise, their website for any roles they advertise. There's nothing wrong with contacting them every couple of weeks, two to three weeks, just saying, hey, still here, just to remind you, here's my resume, this is what I'm looking for. I can't tell you the amount of times that candidates have contacted me and said, I saw you're recruiting for this role, what about me? I'd be great for it. And I think to myself, actually, you would be great for it. I just didn't happen to think of you. So it almost like makes my job a little bit easier. And it also helps them, the candidate, because I can't, you know, it's very hard to remember every single person that, that you've spoke to. We probably speak to 20 people, 25 candidates a week. So be proactive. Um, and then offer to help. Um, this is really key. Um, I can't tell you the amount of times that like, I've had a candidate where I'm like, I don't have anything for you, you know, so, sorry. And they've said, can I help you? Is there anything you're working on? There might be somebody in my network that I know. That just means like so much to me. And I would then kind of go above and beyond to help them. So you have to remember, it's like, it's not just a one way street, like we're people too. And you want to make sure that you create a good impression with them. So they're going to remember you for opportunities that they have that come up. And the best way to do that is refer people to them that are in your network that you think could be useful as well. Uh, the last thing I'll say here is keep it small. Um, only work with a, um, a few recruiters. Um, you wanna make sure that you're, you know exactly where your resume is, who, they're, who it's with, specify to the agency you do not want it sent anywhere without your permission. Um, so when I say keep it small, I'd say two to three at a max. Next slide. 
Um, I've listed a couple of helpful links. These are just some recent articles um, around uh, booleans and tips on getting job applications uh, in to get interviews. Um, this is that Google recruiter. Um, I'm like really into things like Google um, and how they go about their hiring process or Facebook, how they go about their hiring process because they have so many people that apply to them directly. So they have like pretty sophisticated talent acquisition teams. Um, so I'm always interested to see how they kind of filter through resumes. Um, so here are some tips, you know, and um, some helpful links that I thought you guys might enjoy. That's it. Well, I'd like to just start by thanking Catherine for giving such a great session today. I think you had a lot of great questions from the audience. You were super helpful in providing some guidance in what's a really challenging time to be looking for a job or making a change. Thank you for everyone who's joined us today on another great NUI virtual event. And we'll hope to see you coming forward in future events as well. Thank you.